just looking at this, it's going to turn into, I believe, one of two types of forms. So the possible forms to look for will be something like 1 over square root a squared minus u squared. That looks like the most likely one this will turn into. So that's what I'm thinking about trying to fit this into. Because I see constant in front, and then the stuff with the x squared is subtracted. So it seems like most likely it's going to look like this. Now, if we're super lucky, this might factor out really well. I have a feeling it won't, though. I could, try to, I could factor a 5 out. I don't know if that's going to help too much, though. So let's go complete the square on the x terms. So we're going to complete the square on the x terms. We have negative 40x minus 25x squared. Normally, I would factor out 25 here, but let's leave it in for the moment. This might work out a little bit. Oops, don't forget the x. That might work out a little bit better. Now we'll take the negative out. And I'll write our first term. Put x in the first spot. So this will turn into 5x So what do I need what constant do I need I think it's We'll just do complete the square the regular way. This way is too tricky. Maybe we'll turn into that form later. So regular complete the square, factor out 25. We have x squared plus 40 over 25x. From here, we're going to take half of the coefficient in front of x, which is 20 25ths. Squared minus 20 25ths squared. And all this came from complete the square, which is b, no. The way I'm doing it is x squared plus bx equals x plus b over 2 squared minus b over 2 squared. So there's the complete the square that I'm using. You might be familiar with completed the square written with your uh, b over 2 squared added to the other side, which is totally fine. I recommend you use this form instead, though. So I just took b is 40 25ths, and half of 40 25ths is 20 25ths. All right, so from here, what we're going to do is distribute the 25, the negative 25 over. 
20 20 fifths reduces to a four fifths squared minus 20 four fifths squared So 20 divided by 5 is 4, times 4 is 16, 64. Seems you brought a 20 out of the... Oh, that should be a 25. Oh. 25. Ah, oh, and then that cancels perfectly with the 5. So we got 4 squared. 16. There we go. So 25 cancels the 5 squared. Alright, so now we're going to make this substitution that we just worked hard to get to. So this is going to go in right where I underlined there. Uh, that 7 is a constant, so might as well write that outside. So that whole thing turns into minus 25 times x plus 4 fifths squared. Minus 16. And now we can reduce quite a bit. So we have 65 minus 16. Is that 49? Minus 25. So any questions getting down to here? Forty nine is a nice number. That should be one hint we're on the right track. That's gonna be seven squared. Well, we have a little problem. I can either push the twenty five inside here very carefully, or I could factor out a twenty five out of the entire denominator. Those are the two ways I can handle this. I'm going to, instead of factoring out 25, I'm going to multiply it inside. Now you have to be very careful. Uh, the rule I'm going to use here is this rule. A times B squared is A squared times B squared. Uh, unfortunately, what we have is a number times B squared. So that is not equal to AB squared. So you want to be careful. I got 25, what I'm going to write it as 5 squared. So then I can multiply inside. So 49, go ahead and write that as 7 squared minus 5 squared x plus 4 fifth squared, and because 5 is squared and the x plus 4 fifths is squared, I can multiply them together under a single power. So 
So it's 5x plus 4 squared. So this doesn't look too bad. I'm almost in the exact form I want. What's the only problem? I got the form circled at the top middle of the screen. So I don't have a u, I got 5x plus 4. So how do I get a u? u set u equal to 5x plus 4. So I make a u sub, and that's my u. So 5x plus 4 is u. So we're choosing, let u equal 5x plus 4, du equals 5dx. I don't have a 5dx, I have a 7dx, so I can't just uh, keep the 5 over there, so it's 150u equals dx. And make that sub, we have 7, we get the extra 1 fifth integral du over square root. 7 squared minus u squared. And this is finally in the right form. And you just look at your antiderivative page, find the right one. It's going to be either an inverse trig uh, function or an inverse hyperbolic trig function, one of the two. I don't have all 5 plus 3 more. I don't have all 8 of them memorized. But they should be on your cheat sheet. And you just look. I can tell you it's not tangent or hyperbolic tangent, because those don't have square roots in them. But it's one of the other ones. So you're very likely going to have to do some algebra to turn it into the right form. And generally, complete the square is what you'll do. There, of course, could be some factoring, some foiling, some multiplying, other skills. But complete the square is generally what you're going to be using. And I think we saw finish the problem from the last like class. Plus four, and plus eight oh, yeah, you have to be careful with signs, yeah. which I didn't make a big deal about because I was careful with them. But I took out. I used the negative sign, so I took out everything inside that blue box. And if you look down here, it looks like I added an extra plus sign. If you don't have that there, it, you'll be multiplying. So I had to put, I didn't make it positive, but I had to add in that thing. And if you're wondering, well, how did I, you could just think of this as two negative signs with a plus right there. So I just took out that whole part right there as one unit. So I didn't add an extra positive sign in. There was sort of already one there. So we got our answer for the definite antiderivative that we computed. And we're ready to go into trig integrals. So there is one form that we're going to be integrating at the first part of trig integrals. And it looks like integral, so it's going to be sine, sine to the m, the m power x, times cosine to the n power dx. And we're going to look at different combinations of m and n being even and odd, and what we can do when one of them is odd. So we got case 1 if m is odd. So how can you write an odd number if m is odd? You could write m as 2k plus 1, where k is an integer. So odd numbers can be written as basically an even number plus 1. 
there's lots of other ways to write odd numbers. I could do 2k minus 1. That works just as well. You just pick a different k. So if it's odd, we can write it like that. m is odd, and sine was what was raised to the m power. We're about to do some algebra, so it's a bad idea to use the bad notation for the power. So we'll write like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to break off one of the signs. So we're going to write it as sine x to the 2k. times a single sine x. And then sine x to the 2k, the proper we're going to use here, a to the b to the c power is a to the b times c power. So the power is 2 times k, so I can write this as sine squared to the k power. And I will use the bad notation for that squared. And now, sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. So what I did here is not impressive, but seems sort of random. Why am I doing this? So we'll see why am I doing this. So if you have an odd number of signs, you can write it as one of them multiplied by an even number of signs. And the reason we need that to be even is so I can make this uh, sine squared substitution for <coughs> 1 minus cos squared. All right, so why is this good? What we're going to do is let u equal uh, cos x. And what is du when u is cos x? Negative sine x. Yep, negative sine x dx. So this is the u sub we're going to make. Let's rewrite the original integral. So just separate that stuff out. So this is the integral Now let's think about the u sub that I wrote down. So u is cosine x. So our first term, 1 minus cos squared, that's 1 minus u squared. Cos x to the n, that is u to the n. And what is left over? Oh, look at that, sine x dx. It's almost perfect, except I have negative sine x dx, so we'll move our negative to the other side. So du is negative sine x dx. So negative du is regular sine x dx. So we're going to have a negative du. Ooh. Uh, do you want that u to the u, or is that an n? My, what looks like n's are all u's. There's no ends here. Well, oh shoot, there is an N. That is an N. I need to be a little more careful. I messed up on one thing. There should be a K power right there. So it's right above is where I pulled that from. I just took out sine to the MX, and so I took out sine to the MX and replaced it by one minus cos squared to the K times sine X. So there's a k power right there. So bring your negative sign out front. So this looks a little bit ugly, but what type of function is this? It's a function of u. So if I write this as f of u du. What type of function is f of u? It's 
u is raised to a bunch of integer powers. So we call it a polynomial. So this is a polynomial right here. So it's not a polynomial of x, polynomial of u, in which case you do the anti-power rule on each term. So you just add one of the power, divide by the new, whatever that power is. All right, so you integrate it just like it's a polynomial. Then, of course, you've got to unsub because you'll have some u's, and you've got to go back to sines, um, or cosines, I should say. All right, so that's case one. If your sine term is odd, you exploit that by basically singling out a single sign and then using a u sub. So our second case is if the power of cosine is odd. We're going to do the exact same thing, except we'll single out a cosine and make a u sub. So that was case one. We'll go to case two now. So n will be 2k plus 1, where k is some integer. Now, why is it important that k is an integer? If you think about k not being an integer, you don't get a polynomial. So you'd have to work a lot harder at this phase. So n is odd, cos nx is cos x raised to the n or the 2k plus 1 power. So I'll write this as cos squared x to the k times cos x. I'm doing exactly what I did before. I'm just not showing as many steps when I do it. So n is 2k plus 1. And then I split it up into cosine of x to the first power times cosine to the 2k. And we do the same. Swap we made before, cos squared is 1 minus sine squared to the k power, cos x. Now we're going to bring this back to the original. And well, before we do that, we'll let u equal sine x. So du cos x dx, and there's the single cos x that we separated out. So we integral sine mx cos nx dx. So we just sine x to the m. So our cosine n to the n power of x, I'm going to write the alternative version that we just developed right above. So this is 1 minus sine squared to the k cos x dx. So that was just algebra there. Now we're going to do our substitution. So an integral sine is u. So we have u to the m power times 1 minus u squared to the k power. And then cos x dx is just du. So again, you have a polynomial in U. And you solve it the way you integrate all polynomials, and then unsubstitute. So what have I not dealt with? Even. Yep, they're both even. So neither of them is odd. So there's not a single sine or cosine that I can pick off and exploit. So every sine and cosine is paired up with another sine or cosine. And that one's a little bit more tricky.
So M and N are even. We're going to use these identities. And I think these are the We call them here, we call them the power reduction formulas. Or power reduction, power reduction identities. Sine squared is one half, one minus cos two x, and cos squared x is one half one plus cos two x. And you wanna make sure your exponents don't get lazy. What I mean by that, here's what I would call a lazy exponent. That's halfway between being an exponent and a coefficient. So don't let your, co your exponents get lazy. So make sure your exponent's written small and up higher so it's not ambiguous. If you find yourself not being able to do that consistently, you can always write it like this. And then if your exponent gets lazy, the worst that it will look like is something like that. And you'll probably realize, oh, it's on the right side. I probably mean exponent, not multiply by two. All right, so we're using those identities and then distribute to find the integral in lower powers. your powers will be cut in half, is what will happen. So if your power started out as four, it'll cut in half to two. Unfortunately, that's still even, so you'll have to do this a second time. If your power is an even number like six, you cut that in half, you'll have cubed, and then you'll have an odd power. So at some point, you'll cut your even number in half enough times, it won't be even anymore. I don't want to write anything else out for case three because it would be it would probably take paragraphs. It's better to just see how it works out and then uh, learn it by doing instead of trying to write a complete algorithm right here. So we'll do the easy ones first, where you have some odd, and then we'll do an even two odd examples, and then we'll do an even. So we got a cubed and a squared. So we have, there's not a choice. We have to go with the, uh, for the three, the power on sign being odd, because I can't, uh, two is not odd. If they're both odd, I can choose which one of the two cases that I want to pursue. If only one of them is odd, you don't have a choice. So sign is odd. We are, let's see, sign is odd. That's M is odd. So we're doing case one. So case one, what does case one say? Sine cubed x, we're gonna write it as sine squared x times sine x. So we're gonna bring out one sine by itself. And good news is sine squared is not so bad, it's just one minus cos squared x times sine x. So we wrote it as just cosines times a single sine that we singled out. And from here, our u sub, you should be able to see what u sub you need to make. If not, you can scroll up and see what you do in case one. But what would be a good u sub for this integral without looking back up? So here, it's a little odd, but that's where you want to look to decide what's a good u sub, not the other places. 
So if I let cosine be u, then the derivative will basically be, will be negative sine. It will basically be sine x dx. So we're going to make that u sub. So u is cos x du case one, you're going to pick up extra negative sign because the cosine derivative is negative sign. So we do have a polynomial in u. Unfortunately, I can't just integrate it right now. Maybe if I was crazy smart, I could. But what do I need to do first before I decide what the antiderivative is? What algebra should I do? Distribute, make it look like a regular polynomial. So we have u squared minus u to the fourth du. And now this is perfect form for anti power rule on both of those. So you're just going to anti power rule on each term. So I'm going to do guess and check. If I take derivative of u cubed, I get 3u squared. So I need third and fifth plus c. This is not your final answer. Your final answer better not have u's in it. So we better get back to x's. We're done doing calculus, but I have to come back to the variable I started in. And you can distribute your negative sign. So we have we made sine u is cosine. That's the u we made. Yeah, cosine x is u. So we have negative cos cubed x over 3. When we distribute our negative, it's plus cos to the fifth x over 5 plus c. So how do we know if we got the right antiderivative or if we're wasting time. Derivative. Take derivative. Not hard to take derivative here. What rule are you going to have to use? Quotient. Not quotient rule, because 3 and 5 are constants. So I'll rewrite it so it will be easy to take a derivative. What rule? We definitely need to know the derivative of cosine, but we know that. We wrote it down a minute ago. What other rule do I need? Chain. Chain rule. So we're going to, we also need the power, the, uh, what do we call it? Just the regular power rule where you're going to take one away from the power. So let's check by finding the derivative. This is a way better form that I just wrote down for finding derivative rather than the one above. So this form that I wrote down makes the derivative not very difficult to compute. So we're going to check by finding the derivative. So do the chain rule right now and see what you get. And once you get your derivative, it probably won't be in the right form that we started in. So you'll probably have to do some algebra to change the form around. And you can tell already it'll be something plus something. So it's not going to look like the original, which had no pluses in it.
So my original form didn't look like what I started with, but hopefully we'll be able to change that form around. So I factored out. I saw there was a cos squared and a sine squared both places. So factor that out. And we're left with a 1 minus cos squared, a 1 minus cos squared is sine squared. which is what we started with right there. So remember, a lot of times you'll get an alternative form. Although I think, if we look carefully, we probably saw the intermediate step. Yeah, we saw that right there. It was, the first, it was our second to last step on the way. So a lot of times you'll see the alternative form you turn it into. So I just wanted to warn you about checking. You won't always see exactly what you started with, but you should see something equivalent to what you started with. So it's almost like a trig identity to turn your derivative back to the original. So next up, so in this one, our power of sine was odd. Let's do an example where the cosine power is odd. So this looks a little strange. There was no signs to begin with in this antiderivative. That's OK. Just that other exponent just 0. All we need was this one to be odd. So we can rewrite it. We're going to single out one cosine. So we're going to be left with cosine to the fourth x cos x dx, so we bring the one cosine by itself, and then we need to turn this cos to the fourth into just sines. So we do that by writing cos squared x squared, and not because 2 plus 2 is 4, but 2 times 2 is 4. So we're doing power of a power. And then we can finally make our trig identity change. So cos squared is 1 minus sine squared. I haven't done any calculus yet. I didn't make my u sub. That was a trig identity. So when you use a trig identity, you don't have any, you don't have to change dx around. So I didn't change variable, just changed forms. And now we're going to do our tricks, our uh, u sub. So u is sine x. Now I want u the student to finish this off. And I'll give you two minutes to do so. So go ahead and make your sub back in. And hopefully you'll be able to see your polynomial or be a couple steps away from seeing your polynomial. I'll give you a hint, you have to foil or distribute, however you want to say it. Yes, it certainly should be.
Yes, my computers had a very big update yesterday that made most things worse. So this, of course, doesn't look at all like the original form. If I take derivative, I'll get thing plus thing plus another thing. But at some point, I'll be able to change the form around to what I started with, which was just one single thing, not anything added together. So definitely your first, when you take a derivative, it won't look anything like what you started with. But you should be able to use trig to change it around to the other form. So we have to do an example with even powers. And that's going to take too long to do now. I just want to talk briefly about if there is a higher power than 2. Let's say this was something crazy like cosine to the 51st power. So certainly there's a single cosine hanging around that we can pick off. And how many are going to be left? There'll be 50 left, which will be cos squared to the 25th power. Now, obviously, you don't want to multiply this out 25 times by itself. So there are, I won't go past, let's say, I think a fifth power is about as far as I'd want you to go on a quiz or a midterm. I think the homeworks don't go past maybe ninth or 11th power or something like that. So you won't have to do, uh, spend too much time uh, foiling or distributing. So you can do this with uh, higher odd powers, but the algebra part of expanding it out is annoying. If you go past seventh power is reasonable, I think anything past that is going to take quite a bit of time.